All right, so anyway, the equation is pretty straightforward. It's just this one. The change in temperature is equal to the Van Hoff factor, which is I. Um, K, and this K depends again whether it's freezing or boiling. Um, oh, and I usually put molality in the middle, but I put it at the end. It doesn't matter because it's, you know, multiplication. So here, I means the number of ions or particles. And that is usually where people get stuck. So we'll come back to that in just one sec. The K, it depends on um, what material you're using and whether you're freezing or boiling it. And that comes like from the question. Now in Alex, um, so it's about your solvent, by the way. So in Alex, there's either a data table in the question or they embed the K that you need to use or you might have to go to the reference tables like that are on the right hand side. And then the other confusing piece for people is the little m stands for molality. Do you do you know what the units for molality really are? No, maybe. Okay. Is it m? Is it moles of solvent over solvent? So close. Grams or something like that. So close. Yeah, we're gonna put solute on the top, and then we'll put kilograms of solvent on the bottom. Oh, okay. Yeah. So sometimes they'll give you a question where you have to figure those out, right? If you had grams of solute, then you've got to use the molecular weight to get it into moles of solute. Sometimes they'll do tricky things like give you a volume of solvent. Um, so when you have a volume of solvent, it might be in liters. Um, or it might start in milliliters, but we know how to convert that. The way to go between liters and mass is to use a density. So we did this way, way back in the very beginning of Gen Chem 1. So let's pretend like um, I have a salt solution that has a density of 1.23 grams per milliliter. Just for example, this would be something that comes from the problem. Mm -hmm. And let's say I have two liters of it. Okay, I'm gonna make this go up so I can keep writing. Okay, so to solve this problem, um, first I have to figure out how much solvent we have. And I said, this is the density of the salt water, right? It's not quite the density of the solvent. What's the solvent in a salt water solution? Um, I know it, but I literally like kind of forget. <laughs> um, it's the thing that's present in the largest amount, right? Solvent means oh, yeah. biggest. So it'll be our water, right? Yes. And so we would need to think, okay, so I got to use the, the water here. Imagine like before you mix the solution, you really need to know how much the solvent weighed before you put the salt in. So there's a few approaches to this. One is you could go look up the density of the water. Uh, that can lead to some difficulty because density of water depends on temperature. Sometimes people will just go, oh, I know it's around one, so I'm just going to use that. And I'm going to tell you that that really doesn't work very often because one, it, the density is one at four degrees Celsius, and that's it. Anywhere outside of four degrees Celsius, which is pretty cold, it's not. So the way I would do it is to use the density of the solution first and then subtract out however much salt we've used or we put in. So I'm going to write you just a random problem. Uh, do you want to freeze it or boil it? Um, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't no. matter. There's only one difference at the very end. So we'll do both. We'll do freezing point first, and then we'll come back to the boiling point. So if it's this kind of question, okay? 
the first thing we need to do is calculate molality. Well, actually, you could do it in any order, but that's what I'm going to do first. Um, and so we know it's NaCl, so I know that I have to get the molecular weight of Na and Cl to get the whole compound weight, right? So this is review from like about chapter three. I think that's going to be what, 58 or something? 58.44 grams per mole. Beautiful. And I have a mass, so I can take these and just set up that dimensional analysis, just like we were doing in Gen Chem 1. And this will allow us to find out how many moles of stuff are in there, of solute. OK, what do we get for that? Uh, 0 0.04295. Okay, and that'll be moles. And when we look, just take a quick look at our sig figs, we'll notice we have three in our original data. So this is our last significant figure, but I'm not gonna round yet. I'm just kind of keeping track of that. So when I do get to the end, I know where I have to round. Okay, so that's how many moles we have. Now we need to figure out how many kilograms we have of solvent. And so I'm gonna change my pen color so we can separate that out. Um, we know that we put in 100 milliliters of water, right? Mm -hmm. And so we could use just the density of water because they've given us that specifically here. Um, but we would need to know the temperature. So hopefully, um, I'm gonna, this will save, but I'm just gonna save it in case. I'm gonna share my screen and show you what I mean by density varies with temperature. And so when you search for these things online, you're going to get all kinds of weird stuff. Probably built into Alex, there are data tables that would be helpful as well. But OK. So not that, that. So here we have this chart that shows the density on the y-axis and temperature on the x-axis. So. When you're close to the freezing point, um, let me see, make this bigger. There we go. When you're close to the freezing point, it's around one, but as we get farther and farther away from that, it gets worse. So if we were boiling something, the density is pretty low. If we somehow manage to heat it up to 350 degrees Celsius, which would be really, really hot, uh, the density is almost half of what it was at, at freezing point. So this is what I was talking about. So temperature matters. We usually think of um, about 20 or 25, depending on the situation, as room temperature. So it's just a little bit less than, a, than one gram per milliliter. And so we can go down to the data table and find something a little bit more detailed. So at 20 degrees, it's 0 0.9982067. They give us lots of sig figs. I think I'll just write 0 0.9982 on our, oh, I got to go back to the whiteboard. OK, so we can take that at, we're assuming this is being done at room temperature because it doesn't really tell us what temperature it was when we mix these two things together. But the units from that website are grams per milliliter, so 0 0.9982 grams per milliliter. And so this will allow us to get it into grams, right? Cancel the milliliters like that. Then I need to get it into kilograms, right? Do you remember the relationship between grams and kilograms? I don't know. So that's an important one to have. You might want to make like a some flashcards because the, the, that's going to keep coming up. OK. That and milli and centi, all the ones we learned at the beginning of 141. OK, so we got 1,000 grams into one kilogram. And so then now it's just math, right? <laughs> um, so we know how much water there is in kilograms. I got 0 
And so we got four sig figs there, four there. So we're pretty good there with four. It'll be kilograms of H2O, that's our solvent. So now we have the two pieces that we need to plug it in up here. We're gonna say this many moles of your solute divided by that many kilograms of your solvent. We have another student joining us. Um, and then, so let's figure out what the molality is just by dividing those two. Hi, Vivian, we're recording a video about a Gen Chem 2 topic, but when I'm done with that, I'll be happy to help you. All right. So I got 0 0.4302. You want to have four sig figs or five? Uh, let's take a look at that. Let me write down what you said and then we'll look at the data. Four, three, what now? Zero, two. Zero, two. Seven. And you can either write uh, moles per kilogram or you can write that little cursive M. Either way is okay with me. Okay. Um, although maybe the moles per kilogram is easier when we plug it in so we know what cancels out. Uh, so for sig figs, we had said, we'll do that in blue. We had said down here that we uh, had to round to three sig figs because we started with these three. And the, the maroon color, we had four to start with. So one, two, three, four. So that has the right number. So then we get, when we do the multiplication or division, the smallest number of significant digits is what we have to go with. So that means this number here only has the three. So we have to round at the third digit. Oh, that's supposed to be a four. The fours on this tablet always get funky. There. So four, three, zero, I'm going to say. So that zero at the end is significant, but the one in the beginning is not. Okay, so that's one part of that equation. We've got that down. The K depends if you're freezing or boiling. And I think in the textbook, it has a, a pretty good reference for at least a few solvents, but also in Alex, I think they do as well. I'm going to look in the textbook. So in my textbook, uh, which is in your syllabus, right? So I'll share that too. Mm -hmm. It's right underneath the colorful thing. And so we'll do this. Um, chapter 13, pretty colors. This is a colligative properties topic. So we're going to go to that chapter, which is 13.5. Okay. Are we ready? Are we on this is not quantitative yet. Oh, that was too bad. By Rachel okay, so here's the, the chart I was looking for. Uh, table, technically. So for water, so these are all the solvents or common solvents. They're not all of them. There's a lot, but here's a few, right? And so if I'm freezing water, I will choose the one that's the KF, so the constant for freezing. 1.86 degrees Celsius per molality, little m is molality. If I were boiling it, I would choose this one, or if I was using a different solvent, I would, I would look at that line, okay? So that's where the numbers come from. Okay, so that's our, our K here is gonna be 1.86 degrees Celsius per Molality, and sometimes those units get written like this, depending on the resource you're using. Um, it's the same thing, because molality is moles per kilogram. So it's, they mean the same thing. So now we got that. The last thing we need is I value, which I said was number of ions or particles. 
So this comes from your understanding uh, way back in experiment four of Gen Chem one, where we did those net ionic equations. And so essentially you would think to yourself, all right, I'm taking a solid sodium chloride and I'm putting it into water. And so we have two ways to write that. It could be written like this, or you could, this is not accurately displaying how the particles are behaving in water. In water, ionic things will always ionize. So ionize means they fall apart. So salts in particular do this. Also acids and bases can do that as well. Uh, other than salts, acids, bases, everything will just have an I value of one. So anything that's just a covalent compound that's not an acid or a base is gonna have a value of one. Here we have sodium chloride in this example. So it has two ions when it dissolves. So that means our I value here is gonna be two. Okay, so that topic is really like learning about electrolytes is what we called that, okay? That can be a confusing thing for some people too. I'm out of space. I'm going to save this. Uh, I like my other whiteboard better because I can, can just make new pages. So our molality was 0.430. Okay. So now it's just a plug and chug situation, right? So this is a freezing point. We said I was two. Uh, our molality was 0 0.430. And our KF from the text is 1.86 degrees Celsius per molality. So tell me what our change in temp is. You want me to do two or just 2.00, just two? Two, it doesn't matter, you'll get the same answer. Okay. I got 1.5996. Okay, so we, that's degrees Celsius. And the reason for that is because we've set everything up so that's the only unit that won't cancel. So I'm gonna do that in pink. Molality cancels. There's no unit for the number of particles. It's just a number. So we're left with degrees Celsius. And then we have three sig figs here and also three from our reference value. So we'll go one, two, three. So what's the final answer gonna be? Um, one point six zero. Bingo. That's degrees Celsius. That's our change in temperature, okay? So the question was asking about what the freezing point is. So to figure that out, I gotta go back and look at that same data table from the textbook. Um, and see what the freezing point of the solvent would be. So for this, it's zero for water, right? But if it was any other solvent, it would be, you know, whichever, whichever one is appropriate. Uh, so if it's normally zero degrees, do you remember, does freezing point go down or up when I mix stuff into it? It goes, freezing point goes up. Nope. Darn it. Okay, down. Yeah, so I remember it because freezing point is depressed. Okay. okay. Also, we put salt on the roads or your sidewalks or whatever because it makes it freeze at a lower temperature. So okay. lower down. So we're going to minus that from the freezing point. We minus whatever we just calculated. And the math here is straightforward. But you want to show that part because otherwise people get out of the habit of they'll, they'll just forget that other solvents don't freeze at zero. So that's the freezing point of the water if you put that much salt into it, okay? <laughs> All right. I'm gonna save this because then we can put the, the notes into chat as well. Okay, so does that help? Yes. Okay.